Hi, uh, this is Dr. Mercola, and today I'm here with Clint Ober, and we're here to uh, demonstrate uh, the science behind a really powerful principle called grounding or earthing. And uh, it's like many things in life, you can't feel these, so you really need some objective documentation to really demonstrate what's going on here and and to do that we've we've uh, put together some really easily available tools such as a low voltage electronic meter that you can pick up pretty much anywhere and Clint will des describe yes. it in more detail for right. under ten dollars so you can see this for yourself we just put it together in one uh, centralized location so you can you can see that but if you don't believe it you can replicate this and, and perform the this observation for your own analysis. So thank you, uh, Clint, for well, coming and joining us and helping us understand how this whole science of grounding and earthing is, uh, the principles are, are, are based on. Well, thanks for the opportunity. It's a real pleasure to be here and, and uh, share this. I'm never sure where to start, but <clears throat> I think the first thing we'll try to explain is the EMFs. Everybody's heard about them. Most people don't quite understand them. Um, and to a large degree, people are in somewhat in denial that they exist because they don't know how to deal with them. Yeah, and, and it's, it's somewhat like smoking. You know, there, there's it, you're not going. To, most people aren't going to have a, a negative a, a no. impact initially. It's no. only over a long term long, time exposure yeah. that you have a problem. Right. So I think what we'll do is start with um, the main thing. We have a lamp here that's plugged in, and the thing that everybody needs. This is to, just a conventional halogen lamp, not necessarily the healthiest lamp from a light perspective around, but nevertheless an example of something that's plugged in uh, that uh, is an uh, appliance that we're typically exposed right. to. We could use a toaster, a hairdryer, uh, a, a lamp, anything, any type of lamp, and as long as they're plugged in, they're going to radiate an electric field. And most people are unaware that these exist, and what makes them what they're most unaware of, if I can have you hold your hand flat out here, this one. Okay. You're sitting next to the lamp. Put this hand closer to the lamp. So you can see that your body is a conductor. You are an antenna. Mm -hmm. And so if you're ungrounded in free space, meaning... And I'm not grounded now. Yeah. If you're ungrounded in free space, meaning free space, meaning you're above the ground, then... <clears throat> uh, these electric fields are going to be attracted to your body and they've, there's lines of force that try to pull you into compliance. So it creates a surface charge on your body, a voltage. And this is not new. This is actually well established and recognized within many industries, like, oh, like yeah. the medical field and surgery. A, 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 a surgeon's not going to operate on you in the, in the operating th uh, room unless you're grounded That's correct. for these principles and also p electronics. Yeah, anybody who works on software chips in the, in the factories. They have to be grounded so that they don't build up any static electricity or charges on their bodies so when they touch something that it'll harm the software or, or blow the chip. And, and this, this for the very reasons that we're describing now that you can easily demonstrate yourself if you don't believe it. Right. And, and grounding, I mean, or grounding the body to prevent these charges goes back to the dynamite industry in the very beginning and the gasoline industry, mm -hmm. because if you have a static spark and you're unloading gasoline, you'll have an explosion. Mm, you're dead. <laughs> if you have a spark in a fireworks factory or a dynamite factory, it's up in smoke. Mm -hmm. So it's a very real um, phenomena and huge amounts of money are spent annually mm -hmm. protecting people from, or protecting equipment and you know, just protecting environments and so on. <clears throat> so anyhow, the main thing is th this is what's called a low voltage electric field detector. Uh, they have high voltage, which the low voltage will work best for what we're trying to identify here. These are sold in all the hardware stores, any electronics store, and they usually run anywhere from six to ten, twelve dollars. So, <clears throat> but it's, it's really nothing more than to demonstrate that the, the reason these exist is for an electrician or somebody working with electrical wiring. They can go into the wall and identify where the wires are and um, before they drill holes or to make sure that a wire is actually, uh, you know, energized. And so <clears throat> that's all they're really for is just to identify that an electric field exists. 
Yeah, but it, you know, it's it's an interesting uh, gadget to have for yourself to to to, to show and demonstrate, and it's, right. it's, it's really an expensive so it's under right. ten dollars. So the main thing that what we wanted to do next is, <clears throat> I mean, this is the field, and so what we want to do is measure the effects of the field on a human body. So what I'm going to ask you to do is put, let's say, this hand here. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to put an electrode patch here, so we have a good connection. And <clears throat> you can just get, be comfortable. And what we're doing here is we're going to set, this is a regular conventional voltmeter. So <clears throat> one thing that's important to know about these fields is its proximity. The closer you are to an electrical device or an electrical cord, the, <clears throat> the, the more charge that's going to be created on your body. If you move away, it drops to near zero. So what we've done here, just to illustrate the effect of grounding, because we were talking about earlier with the dynamite and so on, is <clears throat> this particular mat here is grounded. It's similar to something that uh, is commonly used in the um, electrical environment. But this is grounded to the earth. Um, and so I'm going to ask Joe, to, if you're watching the voltage here, to reach over and put your other hand right here. And we'll see that the voltage dropped from, I think, a little over one volt down to uh, two thousandths of a volt. Essentially insignificant. At what point do the, does the voltage level become significant biologically? I mean, um, there's a range. But. It, you know, there's, there's many different thoughts on it. To me, zero is perfect because mm -hmm. that's, the way, that's where we would be in nature. Mm -hmm. If you're out in a forest or at the ocean, you're yeah. going to be pretty yeah, close to zero. You're going to be zero. Yeah. Uh, there'll be, you know, noise on, background noise on the earth. But in a living environment, if you can get this down below, uh, to me, 100 millivolts, 20 millivolts. Okay. Uh, so one is a is a thousand millivolts. Yeah, one volt is a thousand millivolts. Okay, in the so average home, and that's I, the best my normal exposure just sitting here is a yes. thousand millivolts. Yeah, and it, up to two thousand when I go to the. Yeah, if you were in a typical home, mm -hmm. uh, where you, where I've done most of my measurements is in the bedroom, because you've got the lamps, and then the thing that's really important to know um, is. <clears throat> during sleep is probably when people are more exposed to electric fields than any other time. Mm -hmm. Earth's energy. The surface of the Earth has a negative surface charge. As soon as you plug the ground wire in to the Earth, to a ground rod or to the electrical Earth ground, then Earth's energy comes up this wire. Mm -hmm. Electrons electrons and its electric field mm -hmm. come up this wire and they energize this pad. They energize the housing of your computer, the housing of a refrigerator, or any device that is, grounded. This is grounded. So <clears throat> basically what happens, Earth's energy comes up and the Earth is infinitely large. So as soon as you touch this, then your body becomes energized by the Earth. You are now electrified by the Earth rather than the electric field. The, the electric, your it body... It dwarfs the electric yeah. fields. When you're, when you're in free space, then your body is infinitely small compared to the Earth. Mm -hmm. And so these electric fields can perturb electrons in your body, create voltage, create charge on your body. This may not seem like a big issue, but what you may not appreciate is that our bodies are, for a large part, an electrical component to it. Yeah. And that's the way that we work. Right. We, if we, there was no electricity, we'd be dead. That's true. That's how you, when you pronounce somebody dead, when there's, <laughs> no, flat, flat line. <laughs> there's no electricity <laughs> left. So, but, but the point is that when you touch this, you become electrically one and the same as the Earth. You are the Earth. The Earth is infinitely large and it can give up energy, electrons, and whatever, and it actually pushes and prevents. Against these types of fields. Yeah, so it removes the charge from your body. So even though I'm exposed, actually, it's, you see a bit more when I'm exposed closer to it. Yeah. But you, you would expect it's, it because it's this, all, is, this it's, is twice as big. Yeah, it's all field. proximity. So, but anyhow, um, we, we'll get into that more in one of the other uh, sessions.